Hi everybody! Thank you for tuning in to our first digital presentation. My name is Victoria and I work at the Albany Institute of History and Art in the Education Department. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite artists, Alice Morgan Wright. And um, this is Alice Morgan Wright. She was an accomplished artist who was born in Albany, New York in 1881. And she lived and worked in Albany, New York, and then even died here in 1975. In fact, her former home and studio was located at 393 State Street, which today is the Morgan State House. Now, Alice Morgan Wright had many accomplishments. She did a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, I'm going to be focusing mainly on the intersection between her work as an artist and her work as an activist. I'll be talking to you about her sculpture, her commitment to women's suffrage, and of course, her activism for animal rights. So when one is a young up and coming artist, they often go to Europe, right? That's what you do. You go there to study the old masters. Now Alice Morgan Wright followed that tradition she went to Europe following her graduation from Smith College in 1904, and she became involved in multiple suffrage movements while studying in Europe. As she became involved in these movements, she made a lot of new friends, especially with people like Emmeline Pankhurst. For some quick context, Emmeline Pankhurst was the founder of the Women's Social and Political Union, or WSPU for short. Uh, they were known for their militant protests against the lack of suffrage for women in England. They did things like start fires. Uh, they were known for throwing rocks into store windows. And on one occasion, a member of the WSPU threw herself in front of the king's horse, supposed, supposedly in protest about the lack of suffrage in England. Now, because Pankhurst and Wright were good friends and Wright supported suffrage, she ended up joining the WSPU on a protest march in London. At some point, members of the WSPU began throwing rocks, leading to this ironic quote from Wright about her experience. I remember also that she, Pankhurst, told me on that same voyage to stick to my sculpting and stay out of causes. And two months later, I was behind bars in Holloway. Now, this was a pretty big deal. Um, not only were women being arrested for their, over the, the protests because they were not allowed to vote, but here we also have a member of the international community getting caught up in all this. These two newspapers um, sort of show both the local and international reaction to Wright's arrest. Now, I do feel like I should add at this point that Alice Morgan Wright, both during her trial and for the rest of her life, maintained that she was not part of any violent measures of protest. She did not at any point in time throw any stones. However, despite her lawyer and Wright's own assertions that she was simply a bystander during the violence, she was ultimately sentenced to hard labor in Holloway Prison along with the rest of her suffragette comrades. And this is where, believe it or not, things get even more wild for Alice Morgan Wright. According to contemporary sources, during this time period, Alice Morgan Wright took part in a hunger strike. It was actually fairly common for when men and women jailed over suffrage to go on hunger strikes to protest their imprisonment. Very often, this led to a jailer forcibly feeding the inmates because the government was technically responsible for keeping them alive. Now, I'm not going to go into too many details, but as I'm sure you can see from these images, uh, this was a fairly brutal process. Uh, which very often resulted in injury and every now and then even death for many uh, imprisoned suffragists. The violence of force feeding caused such an outcry from the public that ultimately it was stopped and hunger strikes were treated by allowing the prisoner to get to the point where there would be serious damage, releasing them so they could recover and then re-imprisoning them. 
So it created this sort of vicious cycle between the government and the members of the WSPU. And that's how we get to Alice Morgan Wright. So while she was in Holloway prison, she took part in a hunger strike. According to contemporary sources, instead of eating her food, she used it to create little sculptures of her fellow prisoners. And while that seems unrealistic, we do actually have proof and documentation that she had some supplies smuggled into prison so she could continue her work sculpting. It's believed that some of those uh, initial studies were created and then later spawned these busts of Emmeline Pankhurst. So all three of these are the same person. They're all done by Alice Morgan Wright, and they really showcase her artistic range. Take a moment to look at these pieces. Do they remind you of any other artists or art movements? I think the bust from the collection of the Museum of the City of London, the one on the right, looks a lot like Rodin, um, and he was actually a noted inspiration for Wright. The sculpture on the far left is in the collection of the Albany Institute, and it's an example of Wright's foray into cubism. According to Wright, she just barely escaped being force-fed by the Holloway prison jailers. She was released a day before they had planned to step in. Now, these all were completed after she was released from prison, and they were actually completed after women gained the right to vote in the United States. So in 1920, the 19th Amendment was passed in the United States. Um, and I just love this quote from Wright. I feel it really exemplifies the purpose behind her work. The proposal of either sculpture or suffrage would seem to indicate a clear-cut choice. But in all my recollections, the two are so involved with each other that I think I shall not be able to extricate them. Wright commemorated the passage of the 19th Amendment by creating this bronze beauty entitled The Fist. This modern sculpture shows the struggle and triumph of people around the world to try to expand the rights of their fellow human beings. I'd like to give you another moment to just take in some of the details of this piece. In particular, think about what you notice first and then how that makes you feel about the sculpture overall. So now that you've had a moment to observe, draw your conclusions, I would like to point out that I provided you with a front and back view. So you can see that the sculpture actually has multiple meanings. Uh, what I personally enjoy about this piece is Wright's use of fluid lines to blend together the triumph of expanded suffrage with that fist but then also emphasizing the necessity of continued work to protect the right of those less fortunate, fortunate than us. And I think you can see that in the way people are sort of huddled in on each other and gathered together through the back view. Now, bear in mind, that's just my interpretation. I would encourage you to come up with your own and add it as a comment under this presentation. Just be forewarned, I will be asking you what you saw that made you say that. Once the 19th Amendment had been passed, Alice Morgan Wright expanded her activities to include animal rights activism. Wright was so passionate about the care of animals, she stated, I have become convinced that the worst of all crimes cr committed are acts of cruelty. And of all the cruelties, the most excruciating is that perpetrated by experimenters on animals. Now, Wright really believed this. Just like with suffrage, where she was imprisoned for her beliefs, she was extremely dedicated to her animal rights activism. She wrote letters to Eleanor Roosevelt asking for her to bring up dissection and experimenting on animals. She addressed the United Nations asking for them to grant rights to animals and give them protections. 
in addition to these multiple uh, legal fights, she also founded the National Humane Education Society with her lifelong friend Edith Good. And the bust on the right is of Edith Good. You can see right and good together in the photo on the left. These two had known each other for quite a while. They attended Smith College together, and they were both involved in the suffrage movement. So they were lifelong friends, and eventually they focused on the rights of animals. Now Wright was so devoted to animals that she shared the following with a friend. And bear in mind, this is slightly later in life. I must break the news to you that I have become a vegetarian. That makes me all the kinds of crank that there are, I expect, except a religious crank or teetotaler. Being as I am, a suffragette and an anti-vivisectionist, and not smoking or wearing birds or fur. So even though it was against the cultural norms of the time period, Alice Morgan Wright was so invested in recognizing the needs and rights of animals that she actually ended up becoming a vegetarian, which was not very common during this time period. She's doing this in the 1940s, so before sort of modern cultural changes take place. This also gives you an example of the different kind of art that Alice Morgan Wright created. She was not only a sculptor, she also did these sketches uh, in support of a place called Peace Plantation, which she had set up with her good friend, Edith Jacob. You can see her listed as the corresponding secretary in that paper on the right. And if you take a moment to just observe the card, notice how you can still see those uh, lines blending together, that sort of futurism and cubism impacting the way that she has designed the card. This card in particular and many others are included in our collection. And as you can see, uh, just like with suffrage, Wright connected her art explicitly with the rights of animals. She includes multiple different species with the words that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And I would like to also include another anecdote that we love to tell people about Alice Morgan Wright. Um, she became so involved in the animal rights movement that she actually wrote to her friend Helen. She hadn't had any domestic help in months and months, except occasionally a cleaning woman. And she said, till now I have a young girl who doesn't know much about houses or meals, but likes animals, which is of course the main thing as we humans can get ourselves fed anywhere. And then you can see Alice Morgan write with a few of her friends. I'd like to end with a piece of information that Alice Morgan Wright actually included in her last will and testament. She included an animal rights clause, and I'm just going to read a portion of it to you. Alice Morgan Wright felt it was the responsibility of all people to recognize in animals their capacity for friendship and their need of friends, to befriend all Earth's creatures of the land, the sea, and the air, to defend them against ravages by mankind, and to inspire in human beings compassion for all. If you have any other questions about Alice Morgan Wright, or if you'd like to see other works of art by her, please stay tuned to the Albany Institute of History and Art social media. We'll be talking a little bit more about her in the days to come.